starting with the next topic that is Dean's intraseptal alveoloplasty from pre-prosthetic surgery. Now after tooth extraction, the areas of bone, they are sharp and uneven and it causes a lot of problems like irritation, pain, discomfort and it also causes instability of the denture. Hence, alveoloplasty, it is the best option as it reshapes and recontours the alveolar ridge. So it is of two types that is primary alveoloplasty or secondary alveoloplasty. Primary it is done at the time of extraction and secondary it is after healing of the ridge. Now Dean's intraseptal primary alveoloplasty as the name says it is done immediately after extraction. So it is done in the maxilla only which is mainly the anterior region. So it is used to reduce the gross maxillary overjet and undercuts and it also reduces the anterior maxilla. The advantages is the periosteal attachment it is maintained here by reducing bone resorption but the disadvantage is it decreases the ridge thickness. So it follows basic principles that is now in this the prominence of the buccal or the labial surface they are reduced and here you are not reducing the height of alveolar ridge. The next is the muscle attachment it is intact and it is not lost. Third is now the periosteum it is remaining intact because of which there is less resorption and the cortical plate it is preserved. Now moving towards the technique so the first thing is the teeth they are extracted from canine to incisor and then incisor to canine so basically it is canine to canine as atraumatically as possible. Now according to Dean most posterior teeth it should be removed first to preserve the integrity of the labial cortex and to avoid disturbance to the blood supply. The next thing you are going to do is now after extraction interradicular or intraseptal or interdental bone the bone which is present between two teeth it is removed from canine to canine with the help of ronger forceps or rotary drill to separate the labial and the palatal cortical plate. The third step will be now a v-shaped incision or the vertical cuts they are made on the labial cortical plate only which is distal to the canine as close as possible to the alveolus. Now in this you will see the three sides of the alveolus they become free and the labial cortex it becomes freely movable and it is attached only to mucoperiosteum for the blood supply. Now as the alveolus it is freely movable the next step will be now applying the finger pressure just with finger pressure on the labial cortical plate you are going to collapse the bone towards the socket into the palatal direction. So you are going to push it backward so as to reduce that overjet. So here labial and the palatal plate they come into approximation and here this is the disadvantage that the thickness is reducing as you are going to approximate it. And now if any sharp margins at the newly created crest if present you are going to file it with the bone file and lastly you are going to give sutures that can be interrupted a continuous type of sutures that are placed to stabilize the tissues and after that you can give a splint or immediate denture which is lined with the soft lining material and it is inserted to maintain the bony position until initial healing. So this is about the Dean's technique. Now there was one modification which was given by of Vegaser in 1966. So in this year both the labial and the palatal cortexes they were repositioned and it is used when there is maxillary overjet that is gross and inward compression of only labial cortex it is not sufficient. Now the technique is firstly same as the Dean's technique extraction is done from canine to canine then you are going to cut the intraseptal bone. Now in this third will be you are going to widen the socket with the help of the inverted cone vulcanite burr. Then you are going to use a small disc or a burr and using that you are going to make horizontal cuts at the base of the socket and using a straight fissure burr vertical cuts they are made bilaterally distal to canine and with the help of digital pressure both the cortical plates that is your labial and the palatal plate they are going to get compressed and sutures are given and finally the splint or the emitted denture can be given. So that was all about the alveoloplasty. Thank you so much.